Well, it's a cliche at this point, but no less true that in our culture today, the demand for racism far exceeds the supply. There's no denying that fact. And it's equally obvious that the same rule applies to other well-worn isms like sexism. There's a huge demand for sexism, but very little of it to be found. So those in search of this elusive resource must resort to increasingly desperate measures. They must look under every rock and every nook and cranny and crevice. They must plunge into the deepest caverns, torches in hand, looking for ways to be persecuted by a patriarchy that is seemingly nowhere to be found. And if they still can't find sexism in any of those places, then they are forced to find it at the Oscars. Which brings us to the most excruciatingly stupid outrage cycle of this new year. Um, one stupid enough that by December of 2024, it may still remain in the top five stupidest outrage cycles of the year. And then again, all signs are pointing towards this being an especially stupid year, so the competition will be pretty tough. But in any event, the Academy Award nominees were announced yesterday, and I, I read a list of the nominees, and as expected, I, I have not seen 95% of the films nominated. I haven't heard of 70% of the 95%. Um, Oppenheimer, which of course I have heard of, led the way with 13 nominations. Something called Poor Things got 11 nominations. Martin Scorsese's 14-hour epic about evil white people, The Killers of the Flower Moon, scored 10 nominations. Meanwhile, Barbie acquitted itself quite well, uh, and much better than it deserved to, with eight nominations. Eight nominations seems like a very respectable tally, but it was not good enough for the crowds on social media, especially because although Barbie was nominated for eight awards, Greta Gerwig was not nominated for Best Director, and Margot Robbie, Barbie herself, was not nominated for Best Actress. Why not? Well, probably because Oscar voters felt that other people happened to be more deserving of an award. Uh, and maybe also because eight nominations for a toy commercial is already embarrassing enough for the Academy Awards, 10 would be over the top. Um, so there are many potential reasons, but the outraged masses settled on their own explanation, which is that this is all due to sexism, of course. The Daily Mail reports, quote, Fury is mounting on social media after Margot Robbie and Greta Gerwig were snubbed for Oscar nominations for their film Barbie. The omissions ex attracted extra attention on, on the account of the fact that Ryan Gosling, who played Ken, did get nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Some social media commentators leapt to point the finger at sexism. Quote, Ryan Gosling, while deserving, got an Oscar nomination for Barbie while Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie didn't, wrote one outraged fan on X, completely proving the point of the movie in 20 effing uh, 24, you cannot make this up, the social media user added, added, referring to the movie's feminist themes. Quote, wait, Ryan Gosling got nominated for his role as Ken, but Margot Robbie didn't get nominated for Barbie, and Greta Gerwig got snubbed for Best Director? Way to justify the literal plot of the movie, wrote another ex-user, echoing the theme. A third grouse, quote, if Ryan deserved a nom, then Margot certainly did. The fact she didn't, uh, she wouldn't have won, isn't the point. It almost feels like the Academy deliberately played into the theme of the movie to get people talking. Hashtag Oscars haven't been about uh, who actually deserves it for a long time. Now, indeed, there were many expressions of grief like this. Someone else wrote, I'm sorry, but the straight white guy in Barbie got nominated and not the actual women who made the movie, all caps. Now, the award for most melodramatic comment, which was retweeted tens of thousands of times, I think it had like 30,000 retweets, goes to this comment. It said, I don't think men will ever understand how deeply painful this is. A film about women, made by and for women, about the difficulties of being a woman in the modern patriarchal world, and they didn't even nominate the leading actress or the female director? Yes, how painful. The deep, searing pain of watching as a couple of millionaire women you don't know aren't nominated for Oscars. Well, they were nominated for Oscars in the screenplay and producer categories, but they weren't nominated in the categories you want, which has caused you unimaginable suffering and pain. I mean, you know, there are people in this world today, at this very moment, who are malnourished, who are homeless, who are starving, who are uh, dying of horrible diseases, who are watching their family members die. But those people, especially if they're men, cannot understand the depths of pain that this girl on Twitter must be feeling because Barbie was snubbed at the Oscars. You know, it just, it all makes sense. Meanwhile, it goes without saying that the luminaries over on TikTok jumped on the outrage bandwagon. Uh, here's just one example, watch. 
No, because literally yesterday I was thinking to myself that if Barbie got snubbed with Margot Robbie not being in the best actress category or Greta Erig not being in the best um, director category, then the point of Barbie is just like so in your face at that point. I just checked all of the Oscar nominations like five minutes ago. I would have done it earlier this morning, but obviously I had school. But this is insane. Like they actually had the balls to do this. Like they didn't care about public backlash or anything. Like I was literally thinking to myself the other day that it would be so funny if they actually pulled something like this. But I thought to myself, there's no way. You know, the year of the Barbie movie, Barbie was such a big hit, especially in its messaging. I feel like they weren't, I felt like they weren't going to do it. And they did. Now, I only want to say one thing about that. Um, it was bad enough when literally became a filler word that you use three times in one sentence for no particular reason. But what I can't abide and what I will not allow, I will not allow this new thing found mostly among Gen Z women where they begin a sentence with the words no because. Or they put it all together as she did and make it no because literally. Those are three words at the very beginning of your statement that have absolutely no meaning in the context and no reason to be there. You are three words deep into your sentence and you haven't said anything at all. Okay, you've said three things already and you've said nothing. That's an issue for another day. Well, if you're like me, there's not a day that goes by where you don't call or text someone you care about. Uh, you know, everyone knows I love talking. My favorite thing is to talk on the phone. I do it constantly. My friends at Pure Talk are making it easier and more affordable to connect with the most important people in your life. Pure Talk gives you phenomenal coverage on America's most dependable 5G network. It's the same coverage you know and love, but for half the price of the other guys. With unlimited plans starting at just 20 bucks a month, the average family saves almost $1,000 a year. As a veteran-owned company, Pure Talk raised $10 million towards veteran debt last year alone. What's more, well, Pure Talk's customer service team is located right here in the U.S., and they can help you make the switch in as little as 10 minutes. So I challenge you to stand with a company that champions your values today and also, by the way, provides an excellent service. But you got to go to puretalk.com slash Walsh, and right now you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. That's puretalk.com slash Walsh to save on wireless with a company you can be proud to spend your money with. Again, puretalk.com slash Walsh. Anyway, the media uh, jumped onto the bandwagon too. Scott Feinberg at The Hollywood Reporter had this to say, Though Gerwig and Robbie are nominated in other categories for writing and producing, and though Barbie did receive eight nominations, including Best Picture, the optics of excluding the women most responsible for a critically acclaimed film that became the biggest blockbuster of 2023 from the directing and lead actress categories are not good. Yes, those optics. Those optics are very bad. And, and, and when awards are given to pieces of art, the most important thing to consider is optics. Now, one thing is for sure, Ryan Gosling is worried about the optics, which is why he, a co-star in the film, wrote a lengthy statement all but apologizing for being nominated for his own performance. Quote, I'm extremely honored to be nominated by my colleagues alongside such remarkable artists in a year of so many great films. And I never thought I'd be saying this, but I'm also incredibly honored and proud that it's for portraying a plastic doll named Ken. But there is no Ken without Barbie, and there is no Barbie without a uh, movie without Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie, the two people most responsible for this history-making, globally celebrated film. No recognition would be possible for anyone on the film without their talent, grit, and genius. To say that I'm disappointed that they are not nominated in their respective categories would be an understatement. Their work should be recognized along with every other, uh, along with the other very deserving nominees. Now, soon after that statement was posted, America Ferreira, another co-star nominated for her role in the film, posted something similar. Now, of course. The fact that America Ferreira, a woman, was nominated would seem to greatly undercut the sexism angle. And the fact that Margot Robbie wasn't nominated for Best Actress because five other women were nominated for the award would also seem to undermine the efforts to tie this to misogyny. Like, in fact, in general, anytime you're saying that a woman was not nominated for Best Actress because of sexism, there's always going to be a problem there, assuming that the category is still filled with other women. Now, if we get to the point where there are five nominees for Best Actress and they're all uh, trans-identified males, then you'd have a point, although that will also be hilarious and that will eventually happen. But anyway, that's, you know, that's all the case, if you care about making sense, which most of these people don't. In fact, Gerwig wasn't nominated for Best Director, but a woman named Justine Treat, who directed something called Anatomy of a Fall, was nominated. So the claim here is that Gerwig and Robbie were denied nominations as part of a sexist conspiracy, even though 
They both were nominated in other categories, and other women who are not Gerwig and Robbie were nominated in the categories that Gerwig and Robbie were denied. Now, obviously, trying to connect this to patriarchy and sexism is yet another delusional and desperate attempt by very bored and very shallow people to feel persecuted because they don't know how to find any meaning in life except through a false personal narrative of victimization. You know, that's, that's what's clearly going on here, and that's the obvious part of the story. But the other part, which should be even more obvious, is that the Barbie movie does not deserve to be nominated for anything in the first place, Okay. I haven't seen it. I don't plan to see it. But even without seeing it, I know that the movie is basically trash. I 100% know that. It's a fact. Like, I cannot be wrong. And I'm not even saying, I'm not worried about the wokeness. I'm not worried about the feminism, the ideological stuff. I'm not saying it because of any of that. What I do know for an absolute fact is that a film produced by the Mattel Toy Company for the primary purpose of selling Mattel merchandise cannot be and is not a towering artistic achievement. Okay, you could try to find whatever deep meaning you want in the Barbie movie, but it is without question primarily a giant toy commercial. That is why the film exists. It's why Mattel made $125 million in additional sales in the first few months after the Barbie movie came out. Sales for Barbie dolls and other Mattel brand brand dolls were, were up 25%. That was the fundamental point of the movie to advertise and sell their merchandise, and it succeeded greatly on that front. So all the debates about, what does this movie really mean? What's it all about? What are they trying to say? What they're trying to say is, buy a Barbie doll. That's what they're trying to say. Like, that's the message, okay? That's it. And that's why Mattel is now planning movies based on Hot Wheel cars and Polly Pocket and Rock'em Sock'em robots. Somehow Uno cards are going to get their own movie now. So as the superhero movie epidemic finally starts to wane... And, and you might feel like you could finally breathe a sigh of relief, and maybe we'll get some real films finally. We'll get back to making real cinema, actual movies, actual art, you know. Um, but no, because now it appears that the, the Marvel universe will be supplanted by the Mattel universe. Thanks to all you people who pretended that a toy commercial was high art. Here's the fact of the matter. No film that exists primarily to promote a brand can ever be good. That's why all the Marvel movies suck, because they all exist just to promote the Marvel brand. That's it. That's why they're there. It it can't even be a real film. It can only be, at best, a very well-made and technically impressive commercial. So, you Barbie fans should be quiet. Calm down. Calm yourself. And be grateful for the absurdly overblown accolades that the Barbie movie has already received. It didn't deserve any of them. The movie is garbage. And that is why both the film and its fans are today canceled. Thanks for checking out this video. If you'd like to listen to my full podcast on the go, you can check out The Matt Walsh Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.